Brian Watson joining us right now from North Star Commercial Partners. Brian, good afternoon. Good afternoon. Thanks for having me. Pleasure. So recessions happen, uh, expansions, contractions. Recessions are part of a market economy. They are healthy. They're, but it's how you get out and how quickly you get out of them. To Krista's point, should this uh, recession of 2007, 8, 9, should that have ended a lot quicker? Well, you know, we definitely saw it in commercial real estate. It was one of the worst markets we suffered since the Great Depression. And I can tell you across the board right now in our properties, we own a few million square feet in and around the Denver area. And every single one of our industrial buildings is 100% leased, and our office buildings are quickly leasing. And I'm seeing not only activity locally and growth, but also companies from out of state coming to Colorado and wanting to be here. So I think Colorado has done a very good job uh, about getting out of this recession. And I think we also need to keep in mind that with this report, you know, unemployment rates rose in 30 states across the country, and only eight states, one of which was Colorado, uh, did it go in the positive direction of which we'd want to see. There was a report out by uh, mayors, the organization that is mayors from around the country, that basically said that uh, states that have a Republican governor generally doing better than those with a Democrat governor, not uh, exclusively, but it seems to me that small government generally, and we have Tabor here in Colorado, regardless of who's in public office, Tabor keeps our government from getting too big here. But would you say there is a connection between smaller government and a more robust economy? Absolutely. I think you're seeing it across the board, and I think being business-friendly is something that's absolutely needed. I think oftentimes in Colorado, people take it for granted in terms of they assume that people will move here for our weather and climate. Uh, at the end of the day, though, you've got to be competitive uh, just like the other states. You know, another thing I think is quite positive uh, for Colorado is that this is the 33rd consecutive month of payroll increases in the state, and so not only are we having job growth, but these payroll increases as well. And that really creates, in my mind, uh, one of the greatest values for Colorado's families. You know, um, every one of these stats have its, depending on how you read it and who's reading it and for whatever reason they want to use it. And I'm not asking you to weigh in on this, Brian, but uh, it will have implications, don't you think, on the governor's race here in just a couple months out? I think it will, and I think sometimes, unfortunately, these numbers start going in the right direction, and it's partly because, you know, the economy and the, and the true entrepreneurs and, and people who are creating these jobs say, you know what, we've got to go make something happen. And I think Colorado's climate has been uh, favorable. Uh, I think it could be even more favorable uh, at the end of the day. But, uh, you know, we buy assets around the country, and I can tell you what we are seeing in Colorado uh, is not reflective of a lot of these other states around the country. And And again, I think we need to make sure that we do not take it for granted. It's something that it's a combination not only between, you know, the government and its policies, uh, but also with the private sector and and business working together. What do you make of the the latest, at least in the business world, these uh, corporate inversions? Uh, May not apply here, but, uh, you know, big corporations like yourself. Taking taking your uh, you know your headquarters outside of the United States so that you can bypass some of the regulations and taxes. Well, uh, I appreciate the compliment uh, that we would be a large company, but we're you know a small uh, company here in Colorado, and we will always stay in Colorado because I love the state uh, so much. Uh, that being said, uh, you know states and countries they need to compete, uh, and that competition is healthy, and it helps to keep government in check, uh, so it doesn't become oppressive uh, to the business and doesn't take it for granted, and those things are very important, and so. You know, money and companies, they will go where they're wanted. And if you communicate that you don't want them, whether that be through higher taxes, whether that be through, you know, not educating your workforce, et cetera, then those uh, entities will go elsewhere. And I think every single day you have to get up and compete on that playing field, uh, both for companies and employees, uh, to create the greatest opportunities. One of the things that I'm worried about is, we, you know, we are seeing things getting better. I think that the recession is growing farther and farther in our our rearview mirror. I'm worried when Obamacare fully kicks in after the election that that is going to take a bite out of Mm -hmm. this economy. Are you worried about that? 
Uh, I am personally worried about it, and I also, you know, back in college when I, I took a statistics class, one of the things that the statistics class told you is never trust the numbers. <laughs> mm-hmm. And so, and so it is with some of these numbers that we have. I, you know, these numbers that have come out, they they don't include um, the entrepreneur and uh, companies, uh, the smaller companies like that, and it also doesn't include some of the numbers as it relates to you know people going to to part time work, et cetera. And so I think we need to be smart about that, but I can tell you across the board, whether I'm dealing with tenants or companies, uh, that is a primary concern for them. Not only the cost uh, of Obamacare, but the very role of government uh, within uh, society. And you know, whether you're a Democrat, Republican, unaffiliated, uh, at the end of the day, the role of government in American society is changing. And I think we need to be you know, very cautious of that. And we need to focus on pushing back where we can because uh, it will have its toll and it will not be a positive one. Uh, back to real quick, and by the way, our guest is CEO and founder of North Star Commercial Partners, Brian Watson, who I don't even know that we need to fully disclose this, but I think we're sitting in some of your square footage right now, are we not? <laughs> I think that you are. I actually, <laughs> okay. uh, the building that you're in, I bought, uh, unfortunately, the lender, as an example, foreclosed on that property, yeah. and we went in and acquired, and that's what our main business is. We go buy vacant or distressed properties, uh, improve them, and get them repositioned to create jobs and opportunity in them uh, in Colorado. Can you read things the carpet color just a little bit? No, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. <laughs> I'll see what I can do, but I don't know. <laughs> if you want me uh, selecting the carpet at the end of the day or any colors therein. I think that was John Baggett, our general sales manager, that was responsible for this. Uh, but anyway. I'll take it up with him. Okay. Ba- back, to, back to these numbers, Brian, if we may. Um, real quick, 5,500 payroll jobs. Now, what? it's always about the quality of the job. We hear this argument, hey, part-time, lower-quality jobs versus real, good-paying jobs with benefits. Do you, can you read into that at all and give us a little enlightenment? Well, I think so. I mean, you look at the jobs that were created in the private sector, and and the greatest increases were in education, health services, professional and business services, and, you know, those are usually good quality jobs. I will also say that if you look at it nationally, uh, 211,000 jobs uh, were created on a national basis in construction, and there is definitely a growth within construction, not only residential, which is mainly the main growth, but also you're seeing it in, in commercial as well. And so, good quality construction jobs and these other jobs are important. Uh, The ones that I would also say are vital to our uh, economy are those uh, related around energy. And, you know, we just recently at the Opportunity Coalition, which is a nonprofit that I founded, um, had John Harple of Mercator Energy come in and speak last week. And he talked about the positive impact of natural gas. And and those are good quality jobs. And I come from the western slope of Colorado, and I can tell you uh, that those are the kind of jobs that are just so vital uh, to a lot of those communities, and I think we've done a pretty good job of it um, at the end of the day. Well, and when we're we're producing energy here, that also enables us to grow the industrial base because people like to locate those where there's good, good energy and a good workforce. Correct. Correct. And it also equates to a lower cost of energy at the end of the day. And I think it affects your overall operational cost. I can tell you in the buildings that we own, we write uh, some uh, pretty high checks with regards to paying for those energy costs. And we try to be as energy efficient as we can. uh, But the amount of that, it absolutely correlates to the cost of business within a community, which then correlates to how many jobs can be created in that community. Hey, we are quick to criticize, but when there's good news, and it is good news, empirical evidence would demonstrate that, we're going to be quick to point that out as well. Uh, Absolutely. and, And I think that's what we have here is what I'm hearing, right, Brian? I think it's very positive news, and I think the trend line uh, is good as well. Uh, At the same time, uh, you've got to enjoy that for a moment, and then you've got to get back up and and get back to work. And so we want to continue to see that growth in Colorado and and have smart, sustainable growth as we move forward. North Star Commercial Partners. And what was the name of your nonprofit, by the way? That, That sounded cool. The Opportunity Coalition, and you can learn more at theopportunitycoalition.com, and we bring in a speaker from around the state uh, who has been successful, whether it be in in academia or or politics or in business, and they share uh, ideas of how to uh, promote Colorado and to have job growth and some of these very positive things that we're doing. And we host an event 
once a month at the Innovation Pavilion where over 80 jobs have been created in the last year. And uh, my hope is that not only people will find jobs but start new companies and get golden nuggets of wisdom from some of these people. So I'd be honored to have anyone come who would like to. Well, hey, I'd like to attend one of those at some point here. We may need to have you as a speaker. Uh, oh, careful now. No, Krista, <laughs> Krista does that. Hold on. I'm, I'm not cheap. <laughs> but I'm easy. No, anyway, Brian, thank you very much. Thanks for your time today. I appreciate it. <laughs> so long. Brian Watson.